If you follow the channel, you know that I love doing cross-generation runs. My very first one was Garchomp in October of 2021, and until today, all of them were generated using the Sanqui website, but I was never able to fully realize my vision until now. Today, we'll be putting Skeledurge, the Generation 9 final evolution of the Firestarter Fuecoco, into Pokemon Red, and let me try to clarify the process here real quick. Basically, I got familiar with the Poke Red assembly, and I used the Generation 2 source code as a base. I implemented some minor changes, I added the new types, and I set myself up a base so that I can add Pokemon and moves for these runs going forward. If you want to know the Pokemon that I'm replacing, it's Golem, and you might be wondering why Golem. It's just because it doesn't appear in a normal playthrough, and it's the easiest to change, but let's not get into anything too technical today. Now, I do have an Alolan Vulpix stream I did a while back in December. I do go into more detail if you are really interested, but I'm just trying to give you guys the short answer right now. Now, as far as the sprite work goes, I have to hand make these Gen 9 Pokemon and here's what we're working with. Tell me how you think I did below and if you think it's absolute garbage and you can do better then feel free to get with me so that we can create some sprites for future Gen 9 runs. And before we begin I'd like to say that these new cross gen runs take a little more time to get out so if you want to help me out help the channel out likes and comments go a long way. If you are a new viewer maybe someone that doesn't know what to say or even a returning subscriber like Sophie S just scroll down and tell me something that you might like to see in the future. Future. Tell me why you think it would be good. Tell me why you think it would be strong. And with that out of the way, sit back, relax, grab yourself a soda pop, and let's just get into the run. Skeledurge's base stat total is similar to all the other starters. Now what you look at here is HP and defense are pretty good, but those aren't that important for a solo run. What is important is that 110 base special. It also has 66 speed, which isn't that good, but it is serviceable. It's not the worst thing in the world. And if you're wondering how I pick between special attack and special defense, if I have some sort of method, I call it the Chansey rule. Now Chansey has 105 base special in Gen 1, but later generations split it up into 35 special attack and 105 special defense so just going by that rule i take the highest stat it's called the chancy rule so now you don't have to wonder anymore and going forward with these runs i will be adding probably a maximum of two moves to each pokemon i don't want to overdo it and for skeledurge since we are a fire and ghost type i leaned on that the first one is shadow ball everyone knows shadow ball 80 base power it is a stabbed move and it's going to absolutely destroy the psychic types today and you might be saying, hey Matt, psychics are immune to ghost in Gen 1. Well, I changed it. And today we're going to see some Alakazams get banished to the Shadow Realm. The second move is Torch Song. It is the signature move of Skeledurge, and it does something that's not possible in vanilla Generation 1, so I have to elaborate just a little bit. Now, it does damage and it raises a stat, and that's something that you just won't find in the regular game. Now, take something like Defense Curl, for example. If you tried to add it to a move just by itself, add the effect on to a move, the move would just cease to be a move and it would just be defense curl because it's an effect. An effect can only do that effect. If you want a move to do something, then do something else, it has to be a side effect. So without getting way too technical and into it too much, it caused me a lot of headaches here, but eventually I was able to get the stat up side effect onto a move, and we can just kind of jump into this rival battle to talk about it a little more so you can kind of see how it's going to work. And just like I said, it does damage, and then it raises our special stat. Now special, incredibly strong in Gen 1, it does exactly what it's supposed to do, and if you're looking at this and you're going, that looks pretty strong, well you'd be right friend, and we're about to see Torch Song absolutely dominate Kanto. And we also get the first glimpse at Skeledurge's back sprite. Now, this is obviously handcrafted like the other sprite. It is what it is. I think it's pretty good. I actually like the back sprite, but we can just keep moving on, talk about a couple of other things. So the early game isn't that interesting. There's nothing extra. So let me just take a moment to talk about Sanqui and why I'm not using it and just kind of just go over some thoughts real quick. Now, the first thing is the Sanqui tool has been abandoned since 2019. Guys, it's been four calendar years. This thing is not going to get finished. And there's just so many Pokemon 
Pokemon that just don't have back sprites, their movesets are trash, and overall it just changes too much of the vanilla game, and I can't get that one-to-one -one experience that I really want, and that was my original vision. Since I'm making these from scratch, I can preserve the bulk of the game as vanilla, and that allows me to use stuff like my live updating software, and my routing tools for when I'm refining runs, and I can just be overall much more precise, and I think the viewing experience would just be that much better, and that much cleaner for it. Those are just a couple of little thoughts on it. If you want to know more, you can ask me in the comments, but let's just keep moving forward. Now, as far as this early game goes, we don't do any extra battles. We do the one mandatory bug catcher, and then we're just on straight to the rock solid Pokemon trainer. Enter the battle with nine torch songs left, and I use three on the Geodude to ramp up our special, and I want to preserve the rest for later, because this is the optimized run that we're watching here, and we'll just go into that in just a second. So after three special bumps, Geodude is sitting at a sliver of health, so I use an Ember to finish it off, and rather than switch over back to torch song, I keep going with Ember. It takes a few to take out, but overall, fighting Brock as a ghost type with special moves, it's about as easy as it gets. We don't have to focus too much on this one. Preserving six torch songs allows me to avoid healing after Brock, and since there's so many bugs on the next route, I can just do little things like use a torch song, boost my special, and finish off the fight with Ember. Sometimes Ember is just enough alone to finish the battle, and we can quickly move on. The only thing to note, the only thing extra that I do inside of Mount Moon, is I fight the Super Nerd. It's one of the most experience rich battles, and I do it because at this point in the game, this is where Skeledurge, believe it or not, is at our weakest, and we do need at least a little bit of extra experience before we come into Cerulean. And the extra battle and the order I did things in allowed me to hit level 18 on the final super nerd and that's pretty key when we look at rival number two. And as for this battle it's always the age-old question will you get sand attacked or not? And here we do. Now level 18 puts you in a very comfortable two-shot range with torch song and I was very careful to keep two of them going into this fight so we use two torch songs on Pidgeotto we get sand attack but I don't miss the torch song thankfully because your special won't raise if you miss and since we're boosted and we have the attack batch boost from Brock I'm able to go on a tear you can see how Lick is super effective against Abra and I mentioned this in the Raichu video but now I have effective power listed on my move section so if you're ever wondering like which move is the best at a glance you can just kind of look up there and see the numbers overall even with the accuracy drop it's not too bad you can see that these early special boosts, even with resisted damage on the Squirtle can absolutely do work these are very weak 30 effective power embers and we're absolutely slicing through it. And it was at this point in the run, I was getting pretty excited about this one. Afterwards we heal and we can start to go to work on Nugget Bridge. This one's not too bad. There's a lot of bug types, a lot of weak overall Pokemon. We can handle them just fine. But something I didn't think about until after I did the run to I was doing the footage back was that I could have changed Bite to a dark type move. It would have gave Skeledurge another source of special damage. And since we can raise our special, I think the run would have been much improved. Since this is the first self-made cross-gen run I did, I wanted to hard limit Pokemon to just two move changes and I didn't really think about a third change but you guys can let me know what you think about that because I haven't had anybody to really talk about this with. Now outside of that, as a fire type you might be saying, how does Skeledurge handle rock types? And you can see this hiker right here. Uh, we just use a torch song, boost ourselves on the Machop and by the time we make it to the second Machop, a boosted torch song can just one shot it. So rock types, who cares? Get them out of here. And when all of that's said and done, it's time to take on Misty. It's kind of an interesting fight because water's strong against fire but ghost is strong against against Psychic now in this ROM, so let's see how it goes. Misty has been the bane for tons of fire type runs. Very high special Pokemon that are fast and love to crit. But here, Skeledurge just doesn't care. I go straight Torch Song on the Staryu, and even though it's resisted, it still does a bunch of damage. But more importantly, we are passively ramping up our special, and we'll need all the special we can get for Starmie. We don't outspeed, we take a move, it doesn't crit, and that's what we like to see. You can see how little damage it actually does to us, but when we throw back a Torch Song that's double 
boosted, it does over half its health and damage, Misty uses an X defend on our next turn, and I'm able to finish this battle off easy, Skeledurge really representing fire types well today. On the sidebar, you might notice that the TM move pool for Skeledurge is a little bit sparse. Now it does learn some other things like Mimic and Reflect that we're not going to use, and if you're new to the channel, you know that I don't put extra fluff on the move pool unless I'm going to use it. I put Dig over there because I wasn't sure, but we end up not using it. Skeledurge is just really strong, and you really don't have to wait that long to make it to Earthquake, but physical moves just aren't that useful when you have Torch Song. And kind of like with Articuno, you want to use Torch Song as often as possible. So after the Triple Pidgey Trainer, you can see that I picked up the Aether, and I use it on Torch Song right after that, and I use it on the next Junior Trainer here, and that's kind of the key to this run. When I went through my practice runs and I was seeing how many elixirs I had left over, I was constantly looking for new ways to replenish Torch Song without having to visit a Pokemon Center. On board the SSN, I do get to learn Body Slam, and after doing a few runs, I really thought about doing another one and cutting Body Slam out, because I've already talked about how physical moves aren't that useful here, but there still are a few spots that it does come in handy, and outside of that, I do pick up the Rare Candy guarded by the Gentleman, and let's take a look at Rival number 3 now that I have more levels. And this battle just kind of tells you everything that you need to know about Skeledurge, I guess Torch Song in general. Now if Torch Song can one shot the first Pokemon, it's kind of similar to how Rollout is I guess, like you keep getting more and more power and it just gets out of hand really quick. So we one shot the Pidgeotto and we just use Torch Song again and by the time we make it to the Kadabra we can just use Body Slam and at this point the Special Boost plus Torch Song can one shot a very bulky War Turtle. So it's pretty crazy and I, Torch Song is really strong. That's all That's all you can say about it. Oh what's that you say? You want to see some more Torch Song? Well here's Lieutenant Surge. Now Raichu is normally pretty bulky in terms of special and you want to use your physical moves but if you get to use Torch Song on both the Voltorb and the Pikachu, by the time you make it to Raichu, you can just easily one-shot this thing and we can move on. Have I mentioned that Torch Song is strong yet? Afterwards, with Torch Song in hand, we don't really fear anything. Even the Hiker in Rock Tunnel doesn't mean a thing to us, and we can pick right back up in Celadon. And once we're there, we do things a little bit different. Normally, you would heal so that you can anchor yourself there for a couple of things, but here, we just go straight past it and we immediately go down to fight Erica. There's no extra battles. We destroy the Execute trainer and we move straight into Erica. I enter the fight with just a single torch song remaining and here I use it on the victory bell, ramp up our special and even though it's anno like how annoying is it that rap works on ghost type let me just say that but anyway after one special boost our ember is strong enough just to get to the end of this fight. Erica has Tangela on her team do I really need to say much more about it than that. When the battle is over I hit level 32 and we get a chance to learn a pretty early flamethrower. Now very strong move I love flamethrower it's one of my favorite moves and not that many pokemon in gen 1 learn it so i'm glad to have it along with torch song it's going to be very strong we're going to be burning a lot of people today and i probably should have brought this up at the very start of the video but obviously fue coco is a new pokemon so we're using its generation 9 learn set i didn't really change a whole lot i had to cut out a few moves but things like bite 60 base power normal move I, I replaced over round which is a you can look up round if you want to I'm not going to go into it but I didn't want to make a move like that so I tried to emulate the learn set the best I could I probably should have brought that up a long time ago immediately after Erica I do something that you won't see unless you're doing a run like Mewtwo or something like that I make an incredibly early Celadon mark by after selling everything that I can I'm able to afford four carbos and these are going to be very key for a couple of fights later in the game but we got the mark by over with and after that we pick up fly and now we just kind of continue on a standard route next up is the rocket hideout we don't have to go into detail here but like i just mentioned only runs like mewtwo or something that strong can get away with going to the mark very early and getting that out of the way early means that i don't have to waste time picking up high money items in places like the rocket hideout and we can just quickly go through it now we can get to see the really deadly combination of torch song into flamethrower it does a lot of damage it's kind of absurd when I was looking at the damage numbers. And after that, I just keep it rolling straight into Pokemon Tower. Now, we normally skip this battle like 99% of the time, but I just really enjoy the dynamic of this steamroll that happens here. If you could just knock out something with Torch Song, get the special boost, you start to become this unstoppable machine where even your resisted damage is going to start knocking things out. And after we get three boosts, it gets so absurdly strong that nothing could stand in our way. And it's just really cool. I really like this dynamic and this cross-gen run if you can't
Can't tell I really like this one. But after that, we can skip over the rest of Pokemon Tower. There's nothing interesting there, and we can just see what the rest of the game has for us. From there, I pick up the final HMs of the run inside the Safari Zone, and Skeledurge, at this power level, I'm able to comfortably go to Silph Co. And on the 10th floor, I'm able to pick up the Rare Candy, the Carbos, but more importantly, Earthquake for some really nice coverage in the mid game. I don't do anything extra, and after using one Rare Candy right before rival number five, that allows us to hit level 38. We get access to Shadow Ball, and outside of our fire moves, it's probably our best move in the game. 120 effective power. It's pretty strong, and since Psychic are weak to it, you already know. But now, let's take a look at rival number five. Pidgeot is first, and we've seen this a lot. I don't mean to be a broken record or anything like that, but two Torch Songs is what it takes to knock it out, and we only take a wing attack in return, and at this point, we're two stage boosted on our special, and we're just got the rest of the fight ahead of us, and it's looking really solid. At this point on the Growlithe, you could just use Torch Song to keep boosting yourself since Growlithe is so pathetic, but the goal here is to beat the game as fast as I can, and using Earthquake is faster in that regards, but when it comes to things like the Execute, you should use a torch song because it's going to one shot it anyway and it doesn't hurt to have your special raised just a little bit more. As for Alakazam, Shadow Ball is going to banish it and I guess it's as good of a time as any to mention that Ghost is physical damage in Gen 1, Shadow Ball didn't exist and I guess they just created it this way to be an answer to Psychic but they messed up the code. But anyway, enjoy Alakazam getting blasted. And speaking of blasted, Blastoise is last and I make a mistake here. This is kind of like, it's really hard to wrap your head around the fact that flamethrower the resisted move is going to do more damage but it does so i go for earthquake and i kind of realize my mistake now there was a pretty decent chance for flamethrower to one shot so i might have missed out on a turn here but overall it's just wor something worth noting something to remind myself for the future and that's the battle it really isn't that bad skeledurge makes things look pretty easy afterwards we can just skip over the rest of silph co and i do fly down to fuchsia so that i can go ahead and take on koga but if i was more confident the damage ranges didn't look great. If I could have went ahead and took on Sabrina, I could have potentially saved just a little bit of time, but it is what it is. Let's just take a look at Koga. And this battle is kind of like a prime example of some things I learned after playing a few of these runs. You would think that since we have Earthquake and it's showing that it has 200 effective base power, that it would be the way to go. But Torch Song, I can't, it's strong. I don't want to keep saying it. I feel like it's going to make the video worse if I do, but if you could just knock out something with Torch Song, like I do here I knock out the coughing it's a guaranteed one shot the muck takes two but at that point I'm times three boosted on my special and flamethrower is hitting so hard that earthquake is just a thing of the past it doesn't even matter if these things resisted fire I would still be able to mow them down like the degenerates that they are and we could just move on once again but here the speed badge boost is very important I know in some other Sanqui ROMs we had some really hard walls to Sabrina specifically some of the dark types that we did but here Foy Coco seeing shadow ball in action it just really almost brings a tear to my eyes i absolutely love it when alakazam is just reduced to pretty much being absolutely useless and this is a very very satisfying battle especially seeing venomoth get burned like the little bug it is and now we can just take the most serene and brisk swim down to cinnabar i'm feeling really good today our time's looking very good and after a little bit of Tombstoner, brother. We can go into this fire mirror match with Blaine. And this one's very similar to Koga. Since Growlithe is just so weak and pathetic, you can just set up some torch songs. And like the first couple of runs you do, you're thinking, well, I don't need the special, but I can badge boost my attack. And since I have Earthquake, it'll make this one really easy. But then after a couple of runs, I just realized I'm just going to start using Flamethrower. And you can see that it one shots the Rapidash. And even though the Arcanine has monstrous stats, the Flamethrower still takes off about 85% of its health and this one's very easy uh, there's never any doubt I don't think they can really hurt me I resist all their moves or I'm immune to them since I'm a ghost type and we can quickly move on that's seven of the eight gems down Giovanni is the last obstacle before the final six trainers of the game and his first Pokemon resist fire so do you guys think that I'm gonna use a different move no absolutely not you already know torch song we're gonna boost ourselves with that torch song baby and that's really all you need to know about this one I boost myself and and then since Doug Trio is so pathetically weak defensively, I burn it with another Torch Song. A couple of flamethrowers can finish off the Nidos. And by the time I make it to the Rhydon, I'm plus four boosted. I have 438 special. I can flamethrower the Rhydon, even though it's resisted. It's, we already done the run. It's 
special is pathetic, we can take it out in one hit. Is anyone surprised? And now we're in the home stretch. We do have rival number six coming up next, and I'm not gonna play the battle music. Let's go into it. We can just kind of give ourselves a refresh on Scala Dirge and how it works. Now you see the Pidgeot come in. Guys, two Torch songs. Boost yourself twice, and that's all you need to know, and that's gonna set us up for the rest of the fight. Now at this point, I don't know if we even need to go into detail anymore. I do level up kind of early, and I do have to use a couple of extra Torch songs just to make sure that I can get past that Alakazam comfortably. And at the end, I do make the same mistake. I might make this on every Blastoise that we see in this run. I go for Shadow Ball. I think the badge boost would make it do more than the resisted flamethrower, but at plus four special, just go for the flamethrower. Now, I didn't want to redo this run because of that one little tiny minute mistake, but here we are, and now there's not really much else to say. I do use seven rare candies as I'm making my way to the Elite Four, and I guess what's kind of ironic that you wouldn't think with most runs is that when I was looking to refine and cut off little chunks of fat for this run to get the best time possible is I was almost cutting out rare candies. If you noticed, I only had to use one during the run. I used seven here. I saved three for a very specific reason. We do have a badge boost. You do want to reset your experience, but it's not that important. So without further ado, I think we can just look at the Elite Four. And Lorelei is usually a menace. If you're weak to Lorelei, the runs can be really hard. Just go take a look at the ride on video. But we're a fire type. We've seen what Skeledurge can do. We're at sub two hours with zero reset. So Lorelei, you better watch out today. Dugong is first, and I don't care if it uses an Aurora Beam. Fire doesn't resist eyes, by the way, in Generation 1. So even if it gets an attack drop with Aurora Beam, all I'm seeing is another badge boost. It does take a couple of Torch Songs to take it out. We're plus two boosted, plus an extra attack drop boost from that previous Aurora Beam. And at that point, we're pretty much rolling full steam ahead. And I don't think there's anything on her team that can really stop us at this point. Overall, I get up to plus three special, and then I swap over to Flamethrower. Plus three is kind of that magic number you don't really need to boost any more than this because if you are you're just not being efficient and you're wasting more time remember that these are optimized runs and i know the exact number i need to get to for guaranteed one shots and i know how to make the least amount of turns possible for these final battles next up is bruno and i know some of you might have already clicked off the video because you're tired of watching me dominate the game and talk about torch song so use this as a brief reprieve from the action we can catch our breath we don't need to talk about it just just look away, ignore the screams of the Hitmonchans and the Hitmonlees and the Machamps, and take a deep breath, gather your thoughts, and now we can take a look at Agatha. Before Agatha, I used my last three rare candies. It's very important here because when all those Carbos come into play right now at level 59, I hit 140 speed, and you might be wondering why that's key. Well, let's just dive into the battle and we'll see why that is. And the main reason, simply put, it allows you to outspeed the first Gengar. That means there's no games of chance to be played today. There's no waiting to see if you get put to sleep or just getting that chance to get a move off. Here, it's cut and dry. Use Shadow Ball, outspeed it, knock it out, move on. Now, as far as the goal back goes, you do want to use Torch Song here, the old tried and true method, but it's not really for the special boost. This is one of the few parts of the game where you actually want the badge boost glitch for speed because you want to outspeed that final Gengar. Now, it can use Haze. It can be very annoying if it does, but here, it's it's only just a little annoying and it allows me to get off my two torch songs keep the boost and we move on and from there we've already set up the sweep i can use shadow ball on the haunter take it out and with the boost from special flamethrower could knock out the arbok and i outspeed the final gengar by design and one shadow ball can finish this battle off pretty clean now my friends it's time for lance how many times have we seen a fire run look incredibly dominant top tier and we just sit here and we don't really mention gyarados until the end of the run. How many times has that happened? Tell me. It's happened a lot. You know it has. So Gyarados is coming up next, and let's see how Skeledurge handles that threat. Now, I want you to pause the video. Now, if you've been following along, I want you to scroll down, pause the video, and tell me how you think I'm going to beat Gyarados here. Now, if you just came back from typing your comment and you wrote Torch Song, then give yourself a pat on the back because you've been paying attention. We outspeed, we move first, we raise our special. That means if it hits Hydro Pumps and just doesn't crit, we shouldn't be taking a 
lot of damage. Here Gyarados misses the first Hydro Pump. That lets us get off a second Torch Song. And then when it finally hits Hydro Pump, it doesn't crit. And you can see how little damage it actually does here. A third Torch Song after that can finish it off. And at that point, we're times three boosted. And even though dragons resist fire, we've seen stuff that resist fire before get absolutely decimated. And you already know what's going to start happening here. We start just one-shotting everything. Now we do not outspeed Aerodactyl, but fun fact, Aerodactyl just simply can't hurt us. And it's kind of easy if you're like me, outside of like the Agatha battle or maybe fighting the couple of Alakazams, it's easy to forget that Skeledurch's ghost topping and how good ghost topping is on its own. But overall, this is very easy. It's not too bad. I was actually kind of shocked how easy Gyarados was because we've seen like Charizard, Moltres, we've seen those runs be significantly worse just due to how oppressive Gyarados is. I don't need to talk about Gyarados. I hate Gyarados. All my homies hate Gyarados. We're moving on. We got one final battle. It's the champion fight. Zero resets. Look at our time. Let's see if we can finish this one off strong. Pidgeot is up first, and I hope you guys have your lighters out and you're swaying back and forth, because we got one more little melody to play for you guys. It's called Torch Song. It takes two to knock it out, but when it's all said and done, we are times two boosted. But unfortunately, we do level up. It's not that big of a deal, but we don't outspeed the Alakazam now. For some reason, I was trying to predict that it was going to set up Reflect or something stupid, but instead it does some pathetic damage, and I go for Torch Song once again. It does really heavy heavy damage, a shadow ball would have one shot, but two torch songs instead puts us in a position to where our speed is boosted. We're at 486 special after Alakazam gets a little cheeky special drop on us. Next up is Rhydon, and we could take mercy on his soul, but instead we're singing one more torch song. We're taking it out. We're boosting ourselves even further beyond the limits that we even thought was possible. And then, and only then, am I at a point to where we can just stop singing, and now it's just straight to business. Arcanine gets a very boosted earthquake, takes it out in one hit, and I get perhaps one of the most satisfying flamethrowers on Executor I've ever seen in my life. I've never seen its health bar go down so quick. I'm very happy about that. And finally up is the Blastoise. And have I learned my lesson, guys? Yes, I have. I immediately go for flamethrower, and you can see even though it's resisted, Blastoise is very bulky. It's still a one-shot with our 693 special, and that's the run over. and Skeledurge has done it. Not only has Skeledurge done it, Skeledurge has done it almost as dominant as anyone has ever thought about doing it. When it's all said and done, Skeledurge finishes the game at level 62, zero resets, and a final in-game time of two hours, 15 minutes, and one second. Now this puts it pretty much in second place. Now at the time of recording this, I don't think I've done another Mewtwo stream. I might have just gotten drunk and decided to do one, but I don't know. But this this is the second fastest playthrough I've ever done, and it has zero resets. So it goes without saying, now with these new custom ROMs, I can compare these runs one to one with my regular runs, and if you had to put Skeledurge somewhere on the list, even though this is just for fun, it would have to probably be up there with Articuno and Mewtwo as easily one of the top three Pokemon I've ever done. Two hours and 15 minutes is dominant. Not only that, this Pokemon had almost little trouble going through the game, zero resets sets prove that and it's just really good this is a really good run it's a really good experiment and i really don't have that much more for you guys and as always special thanks to my channel members now guys i'm really struggling keeping up with the members here i don't really have that much anymore a lot of them have fell off and there's a few people that just decided not to come back that's fine i'm not mad about it i'm just saying that i like to record in advance and it makes the list a little bit wonky but anyway here's here's what i got right now deal tr2g hipster meves jwj Munis Dozen, D's Master, Cheesy Speakeasy, Josh Ferment, and Kendall C. Now there might be more, there might be less later. I don't know. I don't like to wait until the day before to do a video. I like to do a large chunk of videos and then work on some behind the scenes stuff. It doesn't matter. But if you're on this list, fine. If you're not on the list, message me. Just be patient. You'll get in a video. I don't know what I'm saying. Anyway, I'm done. I had a blast with this video. If you didn't, then I don't know what to tell you. I don't know. I don't really 
really care. I had fun doing it. You can expect some more of these types of runs in the future. I want to do at least two or three Generation 9 moves, and I have some very official and very well put together sprites for other generations. I have a lot of plans, and like I always say, I say this all the time, I have about 8,000 ideas, but I only have time for about one video a week. But anyway, you've been great. If you made it this far, you're fantastic. And if you're not subscribed to the channel already, what are you doing this deep into the video? I do solo runs every week, and I think that's about all I have for you guys today. I'll see you on the next one. Bye!